All right, welcome. I haven't done a recording like this in a while, so I'm just going to reintroduce my own self before I introduce my guests. Um, we, I'm April Zyko. I'm the Nature Inspired Teacher, and you likely found this uh, because of the Nature Inspired Teacher Facebook group. Um, I'm a nature-based early childhood educator. And I support other educators who are really looking to bring nature into their curriculum and into their program. And I have a huge passion for teacher wellness because I know really for the sustainability of us to stay in this profession of, of education, particularly early childhood, gosh, we really have to take care of our own self. And so today I invited my friend, Stephanie, and she's going to... Um, bring some wisdom and give us some great actionable tips about taking good care of ourselves. And before I, I, I just want to say, we're recording this at in May and May to me in my world um, is like, I'm wrapping up with my community college students. I'm still in the thick of it with my preschoolers and there's just so much to do. And so I was sharing with Stephanie before we started recording is so easy for me just to slip into a lot of processed foods, a lot of sugary snacks. Uh, we just had teacher appreciation week. So we had all kinds of, you know, the parents were so awesome in wanting to support us, yet everything was like sugar laden and carbohydrates, which are all delicious. And so I'm like showing up feeling a little, um, it's, is the word bloated. I just like, I can see it in my face. That's where it shows up first for me. And so anyway, I think that's a good segue to say <laughs> we need to take good care of ourselves. So Stephanie, I'm excited you're here. You're going to give us some quick wins and actionable tips that we can do. Yes. Thank you for having me, April. And yeah, so I, even despite this, you know, busy season that we're in, that's usually the time where we let go of our healthy habits, any that we may have, and it's the time that we need it the most. Uh, so you're just taking a little bit, even, you know, five or 10 minutes to just do some planning or prepping can really, you know, go a long way to your, your future self. So you know, just by planning, there's some, you know, good benefits to it. So planning can free up that um, mental energy of trying to decide in the moment what to make. And it really improves the quality, the overall quality of your meals. Um, and it saves time, it can save money, um, it can reduce stress. And um, more importantly, you know, eating home cooked or balanced meals um, really provides tons of energy to keep you going and getting your work done, um, helps improve your focus, uh, you're going to sleep better, it's all interconnected, um, and just balance your overall hormones, um, and eating whole foods um, improves your digestion, um, reduces inflammation, helps you maintain a healthy weight, and balance your blood sugar. So lots of just, you know, wellness um, benefits to um, eating and preparing um, home cooked meals. Yeah. And I, I know for me, it's like when I eat home cooked meals and I'm actually really fortunate in that my husband cooks a lot for us. So um, <laughs> eat, you know, we do eat whole foods and it's like, I know when I've eaten a lot of processed food and, or, or to go kinds of foods um, that I just, my energy level just seems to be really drastically different. And uh, this is such a busy time of year that it's like, I ha I know that I have to um, make time to, to cook, but I just see the impact, you know, really in my just feeling sluggish and really feeling tired. And, you know, just thinking about like, what can I do? What kind of things can I do to, to put the time in that's going to give me more energy the next day? So it's some kind of counterintuitive because you think, oh, you know, gosh, we're getting in late or, you know, we're, you know, at practice with the kids. Uh, my daughter's doing track this year and it's like, okay, I know like tonight, for example, I'm going to be at the track late uh, with her because we're getting towards the end of her season. So I've got to have a plan before I go. Yeah. And that's where I often forget to like, I, you know, <laughs> I forget to plan ahead. So I... I don't know. I, I think you have some recipes, right? Like you have um, some recipes for um, whole food kinds of things. Yes. And that are spring inspired using some nice um, spring and summer um, 
ingredients that, um, yeah, I love this time of year because everything's just so fresh and tasty. Um, and yeah, so when you're planning, you know, it's really important when you're looking at your week and planning ahead that you do plan around activities. So look at, you know, your schedule and see what nights you're going to get home late. Um, you know, maybe that will be, um, you know, a leftover night or a slow cooker night, um, you know, kind of plan that. Don't set yourself up to kind of fail and plan a meal that you know, it's going to take an hour and you know you're going to be too tired or, you know, it's going to be too late to start that meal. Um, and then another fun thing to do is um, as you're planning your kind of your weeks or, you know, just kind of start where you are. If you're only eating one home cooked meal per week, you know, start there. Maybe try to plan one or two for the week and then see how that goes. It doesn't mean that you have to plan all seven, you know, days of the week, but it's kind of fun to change, to kind of have like meal categories or themes and just stick to those that kind of reduces, you know, the, the um, you know, more it reduces that decision that we have. So for example, you could have like, um, you know, top, you know, taco Tuesday, um, you know, Bring summer bowls on Wednesday, you know, Thursdays could be like a one pan, sheet pan roasting or a skillet dish. Um, you know, Fridays could be like a grill night. Um, that could be like dinner categories. And then like breakfast categories could be for the week, maybe you're supposed to do smoothies. Um, and then maybe like the next week you do like something like overnight oats. And then for lunch, you know, you could do salads or wraps are always great and just you know easy to do in the, in the springtime. I know one of the meals that I struggle with is breakfast because it's either like, um, you know, I grab something just really carbohydrate laden and coffee, or I skip it all together. And I'm like, I've just yeah. set myself up to fail. Um, so what, what is a, what's a tip around breakfast? Yeah. So a tip around breakfast is to make sure that you're not eating your eating dessert for breakfast. Let's just say so you're not having just starches and sugars because that will just set you up for a blood sugar roller coaster that will leave you. You're just never going to feel caught up for the day you're going to have, you know, you're going to be constantly hungry at 3 p.m. You're going to have that crash and you're going to feel um, just kind of craving sugars and carbs for the rest of the day. So a good tip is just to get a good portion of protein and. Uh, and some fiber in that meal and you'll have lots of energy. So an example of that could be like a easy protein smoothie that um, has, you know, you can either use a protein powder uh, for convenience or you could use like nuts and seeds like nut butters, like peanut butter, um, add some chia or flax and some fruits and vegetables. And that can really fill you up for, for hours. Mm. Um, like I said, overnight oats is a good one too, because you can prep that for the whole week or for a couple of days and just add in all those things like I, that you would add to the smoothie mm. um, as well. I um, haven't done overnight oats in, in years. And so is, is that, is there a recipe you could share for that? Yeah. 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 Okay. There's a couple of different ones. Yeah. And okay. if you don't like to eat it cold, I, I find it kind of refreshing in the warmer months, but you could also just prep it the night before and then just rewarm it in a pan really quick. Oh, cool. I love it. Yeah. Actually, my, my daughter who's in track is, is trying to get more protein as well. And so I feel like that might even be something she and I can, you know, yeah. great on and like make those up ahead of time. Um, so I love that. So the the recipes will have a little will have a link so people who are watching this could could grab those recipes too. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there will be actually, yeah, you can just download the um the recipes and it has like all everything that you need with a nice picture too. And yeah, actually my daughter uh, loves overnight oats as like a pre or post soccer practice snack. So um, yeah. she's, you know, starving after practice and it's just like a nice way to get some, you know, some yeah. healthy you know, nutrition in, in our, yeah. Uh, we we do like eggs, but I always feel like I can't even find the time like in the morning. Yeah, it is like it, I think too, you know, and I probably talk a bit about this, but like sort of like that habit stacking or like those daily habits, because part of it is is 
you know, doing the prep with like the overnight oats, like the night before or a few days before, but then also like when you wake up in the morning, it's so easy um, to hit the snooze button. Yet then I've set myself up yet again to fail. <laughs> because if you, you know, like, um, and so I just, it's almost like, it's almost like creating, having to, to figure out those habits and not letting, you know, I don't know, making it easy so that it's actionable and you can have those wins. But I love the idea of the overnight oats um, and kind of getting up and looking forward to having unique flavors rather than feeling like, oh, I have to get up and I have to like cook with the fry, you know, use the frying pan to make eggs or something like that. Yeah. Um, no yeah. cooking. Um, and there are other things that are easy, like no cook breakfast ideas. You could do Greek yogurt, sprinkle some nut butter in that, and then add some berries. It's mm. easy. You could do um, some cottage cheese and berries and a piece of toast, um, avocado toast. Um, yeah, just make sure you're adding when you're having these things that you're adding some protein, fat, and fiber to it. Um, but it doesn't have to be something you know that you you cook and when you do make a meal plan, make sure it's visible somewhere. Like I put it on my refrigerator. It's just like my hand written notes. And then, so the night um, at, in the evening after dinner, when we're like cleaning up, that's when we actually, we pack our lunches. Mm -hmm. um, my husband and I pack a lunch and my kids pack their lunches. And I will then look to see what's, you know, do I need to prep something for breakfast the next day? Cause it's my, I look to see what I've had planned. And that's my kind of cue or reminder that oh <laughs> I actually want overnight oats I got to do it tonight but then you can make you know like I said you can make it for a couple of days ahead um if you I want like it's good so you don't even and I love I'm so happy when I wake up and I know breakfast is already made <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving that idea well and I kind of felt like you know um it's easy when I, I kind of feel like I'm off the bandwagon a bit because I, it's been so busy the last few weeks, like the, for me, actually the last three weeks have been really busy. So I've kind of slipped into these bad habits and I was starting to think in my mind and rationalize, like I should just wait, you know, until, you know, June 15th when I'm, you know, and then, and that's you know, like three, more than three weeks from now. Um, but actually, no, it's like uh, making the commitment. Like today I was like, okay, I'm going to focus today on drinking water because it's a habit that I've gotten out of. And so it's like, if I can do this, that's like a starting point, you know, for me. And then I feel like, okay, that felt good. I actually feel hydrated and, you know, and then if I'm like, okay, I'm going to commit to really thinking about breakfast. Um, and then another one that really is a fall down for me, particularly on the days where I'm at, I'm teaching at a public, at the public school three days a week. Um, is not meal, uh, not planning a lunch. So could you just chime in on like a little, some not overwhelming and simple thoughts about how can you, um, what can we do about lunch? Because that's yeah. one that it's easy to either skip or put off into the point where you're like so hungry. Like I'll go to the teacher's lounge and I'm like, whatever is here, I'm going to eat. Yeah. And, even if yeah. I don't normally, I don't even really enjoy it. And so then again, it's like, gosh, that's sort of, why am I doing that to myself? Yeah. Well, when you have, when you plan a meal, you just want to kind of think about, I think about it like a plate, you know, so about half of my plate, I like to have as fruits and, and veggies, a quarter of it is a protein. And then a quarter, it could be like a whole grain or a starch. And then, so I kind of see what components I have and throw that together in like a bowl or a salad um, or a wrap. And I, I mean, I do leftovers for lunch constantly. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's just an easy way, but you could have like um, canned tuna or canned salmon. That could be your protein mm -hmm. and um, have a little bit of like, oh, and a healthy, you know, and in that plate too, you want to have like a serving of like a healthy fat. So you could put some olive oil on that make it, you know, kind of like a tuna salad and then um, put it in a whole grain wrap and add some, mm. uh, some leafy greens or something like that. And then you kind of, you know, there and mm -hmm. some a snack on the side. Um, but uh, I like to kind of single ingredient meal prep. Like I don't meal prep whole meals because that mm -hmm. just takes a lot of time. But as yeah. throughout the week, like I'll, you know, in my instant pot do hard boiled eggs or a big batch of rice or, you know, you can, you can do chicken breast in your instant mm -hmm. pot 
and then you have those ingredients to kind of pull together and make a dressing or a marinade in a mason jar and then that lasts for like a week or two mm. so you can just kind of pull these like single ingredients together and to make a meal and I think that's how you get the how it's realistic I think to get real food into your diet is those kinds of strategies and those have worked for me in the past and then it's just remembering yeah. to do the thing and so I love that you've got a recipe book for us and um you know, I, I love following you actually on social media too, because you post a lot of great photos and I'm like, yes, we need photos of this, not of, you know, buttercream frosted cupcakes. Like I would have like <laughs> my social feed. So I'm seeing real food in my, you know, in my feed and it, cause I do find it's inspiring and I love eating that way. And it's like, it does take, it does take a little bit more effort, but man, it totally pays off. Um, I know like both in my energy level and, um, you know, just in like how I'm feeling in my body and the mental clarity, I find that, you know, as I slip into the last couple of few weeks of eating, um, junky and I did try to go, I did try to have like a get off junk food and it just for a week. And then I was like, gosh, I just, it was like too much of it. It was teacher appreciation week. And I was like, there was way, it was like, yeah, you know, it was way, it was like the timing wasn't quite right for me that week. But I do know that as I get away from those processed foods, it just feels better in our body. And so I love that we, we have this. Um, do you want to share where you're most active on social so that people can enjoy your photos? Yeah. Like I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, my Instagram handle, that's probably where I'm most active is um, at master her health at master her health. And I'll put a link in this. Um, I'm going to, this is going to be posted in, um, in Facebook. And so, or sorry, it's going to be uploaded into YouTube and then posted in Facebook because we can't do, there's a long winded story about no longer being able to live stream directly into the Facebook group. Um, but there'll be links, um, under the YouTube video. So Instagram is at master her health. Um, and then what about the recipe book? do is there a link that they can click on to to get that from you okay yeah cool. yep I'll, yeah i'll give you the link to okay. they can click click on that and download um it's like a recipe collection book that they can download as a pdf and save it and use however they like I love it. And you're right here in my community in the Northeast Kingdom in Vermont, but it's awesome that people anywhere can connect. Um, and so both having the Instagram and having that recipe is awesome. Um, and do you, I know in the past you've done some like webinars and things too. Do you, how do people, I guess once they, if they follow you on social or if they get the recipe book, um, they, um, uh, yeah, like do you, would yeah, you be doing one I'll of those be... again? Yeah, I actually have a, um, a webinar coming up about resetting your, your body and mind through, yeah, just easy, cool. actual lifestyle tips and nutrition. And um, yeah, and it's free. So awesome. yeah, um, I can share, you know, we can share that too as well. Okay, very cool. All right. Well, I, uh, I know I have a ton of other things to do today, but it's been so good talking <laughs> to you and I, I'm doing it. I'm like, I'm back on the bandwagon. I'm climbing back up on yeah. there. And just, I just yeah. know that lifestyle, it's, it's not to me, it's not about, you know, fat diets or those kinds of things, but really, you know, cooking foods that feel good in my body and that fuel my own teenagers and my husband. Um, I just think it's, it's so good to have people like you making us good resources. So thanks so yeah. much, Stephanie. Yeah, thank you.